Thank you so much for watching the Press Avenue YouTube channel. My name is John and I like to talk about WordPress tutorials from plugins, themes, and everything you would need to better use your WordPress website. Today we're going to talk about Elementor and their new form submissions area on the back end of a website. So they announced a, about a week back, a few days back, uh, two days ago, um, that they now have form submissions in Elementor Pro. So as a disclaimer, this does not work in the Elementor free version. It is only for the pro version, and I'm going to walk you through it right now. So I have a local install um, that has just Elementor, and then I believe it has the Envata, yeah, it must, um, Elements plugin and nothing else. So it's a pretty stock site. You don't technically need this one but it's a fast way to jazz up a site for a tutorial in a little amount of time. If you do want to see that, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'll show you how. All right, so let's get to it. We'll head to the front end and go to a contact page. And here we're going to add a form and then put some submissions into it and show you the whole process. So we'll edit with Elementor, which will bring us to the back end editing. So here we have this, and we're going to add a form. So again, under the Pro, if you don't have the Pro, you will need it for this. I'm going to put a form right in here. Now the default form comes with name, email, and message. I'm going to go ahead and name this Contact Us Form. If you don't name it, um, you'll have a bunch of random form names in the back and it'll be a little harder to drill down which submission goes to which form. So I do recommend naming it. Uh, we'll just edit this a little bit. Say your name, the placeholder I'll leave. I usually make the name required. Email is always required out of the gate. And then we'll say, what is your question? And then I can say, Question, we'll say insert question here. And I'll make this as required as well. And I'm also gonna add a phone number and it won't be required. Phone, phone, sometimes I do, you know, best time to get a hold of you. Um, so there's that. Uh, if you didn't know, you can drag this up. So now we have name, phone, email, name, phone, email, right out of the gate. Uh, required mark, um, if you do have anything required, so if this email here is required, I do turn this on. I know some people say it's ugly, but if you don't and they leave it out, it may push the user away and ultimately do want them to contact you. So uh, there are the fields. Also under advanced, you can have default value. You can change the IDs, etc. The label. We can turn this off and make it a little more uh, pleasing to the eye. So see the labels here. So what is your question disappears. Um, you still need the label, even if you're going to hide it. And the reason is on the notifications, um, these labels will be there. So it'll say email and then it'll say whatever at email.com. So you do need the labels for your own sanity later. Input size, I usually make this a medium. And then uh, buttons, etc. I usually make this a medium as well. And then that is it for this. I'll, actually, I will add a few more things. Actions after submit, I always have um, either you know MailChimp, ConvertKit. I actually use MailerLite and ConvertKit um, to then take their email and either add it to a newsletter, etc. I would put a checkbox in here for them to say yes or no. And then once I add MailerLite, it says, hey, you got to add it. Now, this is on a local site, so I don't have MailerLite integration set up, but I would just select it there. And lastly, that's it. So I'll go ahead and hit update. So it's updating. Now we'll go to the front end, and we will submit something to the form. So my name is John, John YouTube, my phone number is this my email that's just my password manager you at tube um, and my question is how are you 
and then I'll go ahead and hit send. So it says mailer lights invalid. I should have turned that off. <laughs> this message is not visible to site visitors, so you can see that I'm logged in. All right, um, so next I will submit another one. Smith will change. Let's do. Copy, paste, paste. There we go. Send. I believe it's saving these, even though I have that mailer light thing turned on. Let me turn that off. We'll just double check here. So we'll let it load. My internet goes a little slower each time I do a video. So I'll come down here. Submissions after submit. We'll turn this guy off. Update. Go back and we'll do one more form submission and then I'll show you the back end. So say Jane Doe, phone number. Um, how do you like form submissions? All right, so send, done. Form was sent successfully. Now, if we go to the back end of the website under Elementor, we can now see these. So we have Elementor here, we click submissions. And now you can see here are some submissions. So under action status, it's actually good I had the mailer light. Um, green checkbox means everything under those action statuses that I added um, worked, except you can see these two where the mailer light didn't work. Um, so I go to view, and that says here. Mailer light invalid API key. I actually think that's very, very helpful. Um, and though accidental, when I just did this, I do think it's a great way to show people, hey, under the actions log, email worked, mailer light did not work, and here is why invalid API key. Um, to add this, if you don't know, you would go to settings and then integrations, and then find the API key you want to use, click validate and save. So back to submissions, other things you can do is under all forms. I had a new form where I've just kind of tested this out. And then the form I just created for you guys is the contact us form. So if I select that, as I said to name it, you can now see the submissions from there. So maybe you have a newsletter, maybe you have um, a comment section. I have like a just ask bar. Um, all of these can I, I can drill down through here on the forms. So go back to all forms. And then um, bulk actions, mark as red, trash, timing, yesterday, today, last seven days, custom, 30, et cetera. Um, if I go into, say, this one, so I see your name. So the initially, when you put the form in, it says name. I change it to your name. So the label follows through to the submissions on the back end. And then phone, email, what's your question, and the actions worked. On the right-hand side, additional info. This comes from the Contact Us form on the contact page. It was created and updated here. Username at pools if they're logged in. I am logged in as myself. And then IP, I'm just doing this locally on my machine, so that doesn't read um, like a typical one. And then the user agent, which I think is great. Additionally, you can edit this down. Um, so if you're using it, um, to save information, you could clean it up here if it needed to be cleaned up. It is GDPR compliant and it hooks into the WordPress GDPR erase data when they request that and if that is something that you need. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more Elementor tutorials just like this, click the subscribe button along with the little bell. Thank you so much for watching.